uh, I hope the he hopes the uh, the audio is okay. Hi, this is uh, Chuck Miller. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to be able to be there with you folks this year. Uh, it's hard to believe it's 20 years ago when I first started coming to these TDWG meetings. But unfortunately, this time, I'm not going to be able to be there. However, um, Walter Berenson, uh, my co-author, will be there in the room. And Roger Hyam, also another co-author, will be on the Zoom call and available for your questions at the end. Uh, the person who's missing is, uh, unfortunately, William Elate. As you know, uh, he was uh, recognized at the opening of the meeting. Uh, I wanted to make another uh, recording of his uh, importance to uh, our work. Um, I've spent uh, over 10 years working directly with William on the BHL and also on WFO. He was a critical uh, member of the WFO project. Uh, we're gonna miss him greatly. Uh, he was a great friend and colleague to so many of us and we really miss him. Starting with the World Floor Online, the, uh, it began in uh, actually 2002 with the Global Strategy for Plant Conservation. The latest version, which is uh, the 2020 version, has uh, Target 1, which is to create an online flora of all known plants. The uh, World Flora Online project is in response to that. And it includes accepted names, uh, synonymy for those names, and uh, descriptions, distributions, images, and all the information you would see in a, in a regular printed flora. We formed a consortium for the World Flora Online project. It uh, includes 51 members now worldwide. Here is a picture of our most recent meeting of the World Flora Online Consortium at, at uh, Kew Gardens in uh, London in March this year. We also have 45 taxonomic expert networks and growing. Uh, they're covering these plant groups um, and uh, working on the class, improving the classification for all of these groups. Here is the uh, link to get to the World Floor Online portal. Uh, as they requested, here's a QR code that will take you there. I'll give you a few seconds if you want to snapshot that and uh, link to it. If you do, here's what you see. It's, uh, this is the home page of the World Floor Online portal. Uh, it has three parts, uh, explore the data, find out about, check your plant name, and uh, find out about is basically information about the project, and check a plant name. If you click that, take you here to the WFO plant list, which is uh, the backbone classification for the World Flora Online. Uh, as you can see, this one shows the most recent classification, which is uh, June 2023 but there's a snapshot archive here that has the, all the prior uh, classification static versions. The WFO plant list now has replaced the plant list, which was published back in 2010. Each name in the WFO, both vascular and non-vascular plants at all ranks has a unique WFO ID and we have over 1.5 million WFO IDs now. If you look, uh, go to the World Flora Online portal by searching for a name, you find a name, for instance, like Poa Annua here. This is a page for Poa Annua, and you can see it shows WFO ID right there. WFO IDs are all assigned and managed at the Royal Botanic Gardens, Edinburgh. WFO IDs come in two forms. The 10 digit form is uh, WFO in a dash and 10 numeric digits. This is by far the most common WFO ID form. 
It refers to the name and implicitly to the current placement of that name in the current version of the WFO plant list classification that's also called WFO taxonomic backbone. There's a 16 digit form which is the same number plus four digit year, two digit month. We make static versions of the classification uh, every six months. So the 16 digit form refers to the placement of a name in a particular static version. It allows explicit navigation forward and backward in time as the classification improves. WFO IDs are usable as HTTP URs, URIs. The 10 digit WFO ID links directly to the WFO public portal using this form worldfloronline.org slash taxon and then WFO ID. And in this case, that would take you to that POA annual page that we were just looking at. The 10 digit WFO ID also links to the WFO plant list name by using this form list.worldfloronline.org with WFO ID. That would take you to the plant list page that we just saw and it always links to the latest placement of the name when you use this form. If you use the 16 digit form, that links to the use of the name in one of the particular plant list data releases. In this case, list uh, world for online with WFO ID and 22-06. So this would be June of 2022 uh, data release. WFO IDs are fair. They're findable using the list of world for online format. Uh, they act as globally unique IDs with a one-to-one -one binding with the object in the WFO system. Behavior like of this could be extended to DOI or other resolution mechanisms if required in the future. <clears throat> WFO IDs are accessible. The HTTP URIs are fully semantic web compatible and will return metadata in 12 formats via content negotiation process. They're interoperable. The metadata uses RDF in multiple formats and it can be incorporated by any modern application. It's also available via GraphQL and other APIs. WFO IDs are reusable. Uh, we use a CC0 for the taxonomic data in the world floor online. And the code ensures it can be used in any other project without restriction. Full details are available on this at the list of worldforonline.org webpage. We also cross-reference IDs. So the metadata returned by WFO IDs includes some IDs from other data providers, including IPNI, IPNI IDs for most angiosperms. Sometimes the WFO names may have multiple DIPNI IDs because some suppressed DIPNI records are still in circulation. Some uh, ranks also don't have IPNI IDs like subspecies, some subspecies, uh, some names from the World Checklist of Vascular Plants uh, still uh, don't yet have uh, IPNI IDs, and some taxa, particularly bryophytes, don't have IPNI IDs. Uh, Tropicos IDs are also uh, included with uh, the metadata, particularly for bryophytes, and they are on many other names. The uh, taxonomic expert networks may provide an ID with their data, such as uh, Solnacy source, and uh, we track those IDs for future matching when updates are, are sent to the, uh, to the data for the taxonomic ne expert network. And finally, we've started including GBIP taxon IDs where there is an unambiguous name match. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, Walter should be there uh, to answer them in the room, and uh, Roger should be online to answer them online. I'm sure he'd be glad to answer your questions. Thank you for your attention, and again, I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you. Maybe next time. Thank you, Chuck. Chuck, uh, I'm, I don't know if you're online, and I'm actually, in case of my presentation, I forgot to 
check if there were any online questions. Uh, but as I said, we have the last uh, slot uh, for further discussions. I'm not sure how I can see if there are any online questions. There aren't. Okay, so uh, Chuck doesn't seem to be online, so it's me again. <laughs> if there are any questions. Donald. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question about the 16-digit forms of the IDs. They, they're not always June and December, are they? So how do you know? I mean, is there a way to find out for a name what is the set of historical versions that exist? There's a list online, yes, but I think uh, the plan is always June and December. That's right. uh, as plans go, uh, we will have to perhaps find a different solution. But at the moment, it's uh, being maintained like that. Yeah, I finally, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I, I finally got my microphone to work here. Yeah, I am here. Uh, watching myself is really weird. Uh, so that's right. There's a list of all the uh, static versions. If you go to the WFO plan list, uh, it's one of the tabs. The archive is called the archive. But yeah, we do intent June and December. Okay, Quentin. Yeah, so I'm going to moan at uh, both the World Floor Online and, and Checklist Bank uh, because they spend so much time on the identifi identifiers for plot for names but not people's names, they just use strings. And there uh, you show, Marcus had a whole list of people's strings that he was lumping together where there are identifiers for Linnaeus. We could just use a single identifier for him and we can link, link him to all his specimens, all his publications, to his identifier, and yet they're just publishing just strings and not identifiers for the people. Is there a, Marcus, did you want to answer this or because it referred to both Worldflow Online and I think for, for Worldflow Online, I can just say, okay, I mean, with the resources available at the moment, uh, mapping the names and getting the taxonomic expert networks organized and things like that are just what can be done at the moment. I think when the backbone is you say it's it's simple, so let's talk to Roger about that. Roger? Well, we will talk to Roger afterwards. Yeah. If I can also quickly. Please, if, yes. If, I never know if I can really talk or not for me. Um, yeah, it, it would be really nice to have person identifies obviously but there's just i don't know a single source that uses them and you, everything you have is strings everywhere you look so um yeah. i mean the next step uh, would probably be nice but we start with names taxa and then it's i don't know references and at that stage we get into authors i guess but it's uh i don't see any place where i can easily integrate that information yeah, if, gonna, if you can tell me gonna, different, um, yes, please. But uh, yeah, I was going to kind of say the same thing, Marcus. If if we if you if we could find that re that uh, repository that uh, source that had all those identifiers, then yeah, we'd be glad to use it. Can we come back to that question uh, because I see uh, Quentin has an answer to that, but we should actually go for the next presentation. As I said, we have some time after. Uh, the fifth presentation. So I'm coming now to uh, Anne. Anne Fuchs uh, is going to, uh, from the Australian National 